In my previous video, we talked about Amanda Cranford shuttering her North Carolina-based deli due to a slew of rising costs. So one of those costs in particular was labor, which has really become a hot button affecting multiple industries, not just nationwide in the United States, but worldwide. Today, as we record this, unemployment in the United States is at about 3.8%. Many businesses are struggling because of rising interest costs, operating costs, and of course, labor costs. So let's explore what goes into calculating your labor costs. Labor costs only refer to those costs you expend for your employees' compensation. This can include your base pay, overtime pay, but usually does not take into account any other employee-related costs. The true cost of an employee, including base pay, overtime, PTO, and more, is referred to as fully burdened labor costs. It's really critical to know that labor costs are an extraordinarily huge component of running a business and can account for up to 70% of your total operating expenses. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, on average, it costs $40.23 an hour to employ a non-government worker. That's non-union, friends. How do you calculate your true labor costs? Because this is really integral in how you determine your pricing. We want you to include your employee's base wage per hour, plus any overtime, plus PTO time, plus any medical insurances that you may pay on behalf of your employee, any union costs that you absorb on behalf of your employee, fringe benefits, anything else you do for your employee's benefit to come to a true hourly rate. So let's say for argument's sake, your employee is getting $20 an hour. And when you add the cost of matching FICA, PTO, what the normal overtime rate is for the individual, you add that all up and $20 actually comes out to about $40 as the Bureau of Labor Statistics says. And you need to use that when you are doing your bidding, your estimating, anything that's going on in your world. So don't just think this is applicable for manufacturers and contractors. If you're running a catering hall, you need to know your cost of labor before you prepare a quote for an event. If you're running a restaurant, you need to know what it costs you per hour to generate the number of dishes that you're gonna send out of your kitchen. So you definitely need to know this and you need to know it so you can work backwards to determine what your pricing, your estimates, need to be so that you can generate enough gross profit to cover your selling general and administrative expenses. So if your SGNA adds up to 20 cents on a dollar of your revenue, you need to generate at least 21 cents on a dollar of gross profit to cover your SGNA. The way you do that is by knowing what your costs are and backing into what your pricing needs to be for your particular model. If you want more detail, I urge you to visit the link in the description and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one. So you want to make sure you control your costs and understand your costs so you can price effectively. How would you handle this so that you don't have this problem? Well, I think you should be asking the folks at General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler on what they did wrong that they're having such a problem with their unions right now. So I'm going to suggest three things to you that you might want to consider so you can reduce your labor cost challenge, okay? Number one, be as transparent as possible with your employees. The employees that believe in you and you believe in them, they want to be part of whatever you're doing and they want to be part of your solution. Number two, everybody wins when you have a pay for performance plan. Pay for performance is not commission. Pay for performance performances. Here's the plan. Here's what we want to achieve. If we achieve it plus, we're going to share a proportion of that with our key people and our employees. And the third thing is, please, please, please don't be afraid to have a little bit of turnover. A little bit of turnover is healthy. Rampant turnover is crazy. But a little bit of turnover keeps everybody honest, okay? Don't be afraid of that. I said three. Here's a fourth. Don't be shy to have all your employees sign a non-compete agreement when they start with you. If they're not prepared to do that, maybe you're going to have a problem down the road anyway, okay? So what's next? The peers were all in a wait and see period. No one seems to really know if recession is looming or not. Run your business conservatively and weather whatever storm might be coming. Also, like, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this one.